I don't know why I get a kick out of that every single time. We are now recording. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is the fifth Tuesday of the month, and that might not mean much to you, but here in the Holistic Healing Circle, it means that I get the opportunity to have a conscious conversation with another committed, uh, light-working, truth-bringing, self-seeking individual and share stories about how she got started on this path, what it's led her to, and how you can benefit from all the great work that she's doing in the world. So uh, we got a few more fifth Tuesdays of 2021 left, and I got a couple people in mind to bring to the table to have these conversations. But for today, I have got one of my dear friends and uh, clients, Jacqueline Donahue, and she's going to share with us about her journey and how she goes about her day-to-day -day life, incorporating in this more holistic perspective, keeping self-love at the center of uh, her day-to-day -day decisions and moving throughout her world, how this has affected herself, the practice that she's created because of it, how she brings this over to her family. We're just going to let uh, ourselves be guided in exactly how this conversation is going to go. But um, I'm very excited to introduce her. So I'm going to pull you off of mute, mute here, Jackie. And I would just love to just Introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you have going on now. And then I, I always like to know how journeys got started. You know, some of us had this knowing since we were a wee child. Some of us stumbled into a lot of powerful information later on, like in our 20s. So I would just love to know, in a nutshell, a brief introduction about yourself, Jackie. And then I would love to know how your journey got started. And we'll just kind of let it flow from there. So let me get you off of mute here. Actually, it says to ask you to unmute yourself. So perfect. Got it. Okay. Yay. Welcome. So <laughs> I know I'm like, there's so much. How do I narrow this in? Right. Okay. Well, I could start to now. So the life I've basically created for myself at this moment. Um, so I live on a small farm. Um, we have goats. I have a baby bull, um, chickens, dogs. Um, gardens. I'm super into connecting with plants, which is a really cool experience. Um, and I think also very healing and would be helpful for the majority of people um, if they seek that connection with nature for sure. Um, and I have two little kids, six and three, and a husband um, who is a hard worker. And yeah, we're just living in North Carolina, uh, moved from New York and we're here. We've been here for like four years. Um, on my deal, like my purpose right now is I lead people to get them to understand um, the natural cycles of the earth and the energy of it. So I really speak to astrology and then also connecting with the season so they can get back to the root of themselves and who their natural self is. Um, I also teach a lot of going inward. So anything that's showing up in their experience um, is there for them to reflect over and be able to change that experience by going inward. Um, I do Reiki healing. I'm a teacher and I am just expanding myself as I go. Um, a lot of creative energy showing up for me right now, um, seeking to offer personal birth natal charts to help people get closer to their purpose and understand what their own energy is. Um, so they can really understand that internal self a bit more. I'm very in alignment with Chrissy with the self-love aspect and balancing the mind, body, spirit. So I think that's a great way to live for optimal health. And that's where we should be focused to be able to change the world around us is to keep all ourselves in alignment and balance. So then we can bring balance to everything outside of us, including our relationships. Um, and through that, through our healing, we help others heal as well. And then from there, shifting the collective. Yeah, so big things, I, I feel like I'm leading that new way of being. Um, and hopefully that will start to ripple out with other light workers as well um, to go into the majority. But with that said, how I got here um, is an interesting story. I started when I was about 18 years old. Um, I was very lost. I had anxiety so bad. I was living in New York City. Um, I was going to FIT, uh, Fashion Institute. You know, like my life, I think, had that picture perfect. Wow, she's going to go far with her career kind of 
deal. Um, but internally I was struggling. I was seeking to keep a relationship and really wanted that to flow. And that was holding me back. Um, I went into depression, just a lot of heavy energy that I was connecting with and I didn't know how to get out of it. There was a lot of confusion. I didn't have clarity. I just felt stuck and kind of like um, just isolated with no way out. So I then just out of the blue, I started going within on my own and my intuitive nature that I've already had, but I didn't really realize how important it was at the time, but I was guided to a spiritual advisor in New York and I kept driving past it, kept driving past. I'm like, maybe she can help me. And I went in there and I will say to this day, she shifted my life for me, um, led me down this path through learning how to meditate, be in stillness, um, kind of be with myself more and not just focus on everything else around me. And from there, I just elevated myself up. I'm, I started being intentional, which I think is a big part of this journey. The more intentional you are, the more you can create. Um, and, and then the more that you have faith and trust in the path, then the more that it'll show up for you. So it's like, I'm intentional, want this to happen, but I'm going to trust that everything comes that comes in my path will lead me closer to it. Um, and it showed up every time. So the more that I've leaned into that, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it did bring up anxiety, um, it just kept bringing me closer to where I wanted to be. Um, so I've started to trust, even if hard situations would come up, I'd be like, I know there's a way out of this. And I know I could still create what I want because I trust my spirit enough that for some reason that is in my heart so strongly. Um, and it's always shown up. So yeah, I don't. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I love everything yeah. that you're saying. And what I think is really cool, you know, this is the second one of these interviews that I've set up and I see such parallels, even though the journey is so different on how you got there, how it starts to unfold, the way that it shows up in your life and how it impacts your life and how it changes things in your life. That story is identical, like so much so that it gives that's me chills. Awesome. And that's why I wanted to start these conversations because I know the power of the work that I'm bringing to the table. I know the efficacy of it. I know uh, what it will do for your life because it's completely doing it to my life. And I watch it with my clients as well. But I know that there's so many different paths to get to this same kind yes. of experience. And um, I love your connection to plants and nature. And it's kind of like, in a sense, you've gotten to where instead of showing up, like I'm an individual in this world that I got to figure out how to make things happen, that I am a participant in this nature that is unfolding all around us. And if I conclude myself with the natural rhythms the natural cycles, the, you know, what's happening with the plants, with the animals and really like immerse myself in the nature of this experience, how that kind of shifts and changes things and how much there is to be found um, as far as learning and self-discovery. Cause I definitely find so many teachings from nature, so many answers in nature. And especially um, as you started off saying, really understanding those natural cycles and how you can work with them and how you can align your energy within understanding your own personal energy. I think all of that is super duper powerful. Um, and I love that you mentioned meditation and stillness because, you know, what, although that's kind of been like, uh, like buzzword meditation, everybody needs to meditate and it's kind of been distorted a little bit. There's such power in that stillness and learning how to quiet your own mind and to become aware of what's happening up there. And you mentioned being more intentional in your, in your life. I'd love to know what does that that mean to you? I heard you say like taking actions, knowing that each thing's going to lead to what it is that you really desire, which I'm a big advocate for, but I'd love for you to expand just a little bit more about being intentional. How can someone build being intentional in their life? Like how can we make it a very practical application for those that are following along this conversation to start to pick up like they can with meditation and stillness? Totally. So one of my biggest tools that I know is natural to me that may be different for someone else, but writing. So when I feel out of balance and I notice myself, I think that self-awareness will be key to being more intentional because when 
when we're self-aware and we notice that we're not at our best self in alignment, then we want to be more intentional about what is out of balance. So what works for me is going back to lining up with the natural cycles. I like to use the new moon to plant seeds. So I will write down what it is at that moment that needs a little more of my attention. So whether that's the emotions that are coming up within me that are just not in alignment with what I want to be feeling or just something outside of me that I want to be a little bit more clear, leveled up, evolved. Um, and from there, I write it down. I set that intention um, through any practice that I feel guided to do, whether it's, you know, keep that paper next to my bed or have it sitting with a crystal. I don't know. I'm very intentional with using plants when I come to asking for support in that. So I will even use flowers where I would hold them and say, you know, certain things I want for more intention. So help me release this energy because it is not serving me. Like I just try to immerse myself in the nature around me to utilize as a tool. So that's kind of how I do it. Another thing, like you're saying, so the way I see it, a lot of people in our society are very ungrounded. And I think it's through their, um, through their, they're not grounded with the cycles, right? So they're not in nature enough. So they're immersing themselves in society that does not have balance is very chaotic. And there's a lot of shifts and breaking down happening right now. So if they're connecting with that energy, it's almost as if they're going to be like experiencing much more turmoil than someone that's choosing to stay with the consistency of nature. So I try to guide that for people that come to me. Um, and like you just said with your clients, like for me, I've noticed a lot of my clients that have come to me, it's a shift, immediate shift. And then they end up, it's like, I'm here to help them over the bridge to shift into a new way of being or new dimension, I guess you could say. Yeah, I really love the way you say that because we are going to be aligning ourselves with something. And if you're just in that, you know, day to day societal kind of rat race where it's just you and making things happen, it's a little bit different experience than when you take that step back, bring in a bigger perspective and align yourself with more of the natural cycles of what's going on than just the deadlines and what's happening out, you know, in this outer world. Um, I really love that uh, very practical way of looking at being intentional. So pay attention to the, the energy that you're surrounding yourselves with, what is like your motor, motivating drive to make things happen. And when you welcome in this bigger view, I know I found for myself, Jackie certainly has, and I, I, a lot of people that we turn on to this way of consideration find the same value and not just paying attention to, you know, what day it is on the calendar, what time it is on the clock and what deadlines you have pressing outwardly in this world, but pay attention to what's happening with the lunar cycle, pay attention to what's happening with those seasonal cycles, because if you're in like the chaotic disruptive energy of, you know, Gemini and cancer season, it's going to be so much harder for you to like really anchor down and be structured and disciplined than it would be say in Virgo season or Capricorn season. Um, so I love this idea of kind of, you're going to be, you're going to be like kind of injecting yourself into one background or the other. And is it going to be this, this kind of chaotic man-made societal world where you got to keep up and be enough and hope for the best? Or are you going to like interject yourself into this natural cycle and rhythm and allow your participation in this outer societal world to be one that's intentional? I have this intention on my heart. I have this thing that I want to come through. And instead of let me be in the rat race and figure out all the ways that I can make it happen, how can I best align my creative efforts, my intentional um, actions with, with the, this overall bigger picture? I think that that is uh, super, super powerful. I feel like you were going to say something else. Yeah, uh, like going back to what you're saying about the seasons and how we connect with the energy, I don't think anybody's free from that. So it's either you're aware of it or you're not. So the more aware you are, then the more intentional you could be to hook up with the higher vibrations of those energies. So if you're unaware of it and you you have no idea how to manage your emotions or even the energy that you're currently connecting with, it's going to be much harder. You're going to feel more in the dark as to what you're experiencing. Um, and you're just going to be, like you said, putting that physical output and go, 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 and never going inward to see where you can adjust your energy to be in a more alignment, which eventually I think by the more we do this, we end up bringing our society into more alignment. 
I really, really love this thought because you know, it's, uh, it kind of like levels the playing field. And that's definitely what I have found for myself. But as, I, as I'm hearing the words that uh, we're bringing forth for this conversation, it really is, it levels the playing field because not everybody is born of the same affluence, the same, um, you know, immediate physical resources at their fingertips. Not everybody has the same um, opportunities in this external world. But when you step into doing it this way, when you approach it from this more natural cycle, it really levels the playing field. And then you don't have to have this, you know, X, Y, Z credential from the outside world necessarily in order to do what it is that you have to do, or the doors open so much easier or the timing just all of a sudden starts to flow and work out for you. Um, so I'm really seeing this as like, a a, a leveling the playing field. And yeah. um, you mentioned alignment and I know we've said it a few times and I define alignment, please expand if, if, if you define it a little bit differently or have more to add. But when, when we say alignment, uh, how I define it for myself is when your thoughts, your words and your actions are all going in the same direction. So often we carry beliefs or we talk about things that we believe, but then our words or our words are saying one thing, but then our actions, you know, just to use a superficial example, how many of us have been like, I'm going to start uh, changing the way I eat on Monday and I'm going to change the way that I eat and I'm going to do things differently. But then your actions are ordering something that on the menu that is not healthy and clean and supporting that. So your words can say something all day long, but if your actions are in alignment with your words and those words and those actions are in alignment with your internal thinking, I have found so much more um, conflict and hardship and just a lot more struggle than when I pay attention. What is my internal dialogue? What am I speaking about outwardly? And how is it that I'm showing up and taking action? And when those three things line up for me, I call that alignment. And then that allows me to kind of flow a little bit more easy with what's happening with the world. And like you said, bring others into my alignment as well and have a lot more synergy going that way. What are your thoughts on, on alignment? Anything to add with that? Or do you agree or so, see it differently? I do agree. And I think, you know, the way and to you know, basis of that is that mind, body, spirit. So like you said, your thoughts, which would be your mind, um, your spirit, which would be your internal, what did you say? Actions, words, yeah, and, and thoughts. thoughts. So, it, you know, your body, your action. So I think when we set those intentions, we don't realize that it's not going to just be, we can't just like forge ahead at goals until that's in alignment first like you were just saying, like the, it's the universe is basically going to be like, hold up, you made this intention. Now we're going to align you or help you align. So you can make that happen. Hmm. I you know? It. Yeah. So I it. um, it's so true. totally I mean, agree. I mean, if you think about this, like in a, in a non-spiritual, you know, in an everyday practical application, it's almost like, you know, if you're filling out that, that job application or that college application, but as you're filling it out, you're just thinking to yourself about how you're not going to be accepted and this isn't going to work out. And then maybe you show up differently in the way that you deliver it all versus having your internal thoughts be in alignment with this is going to happen or this is a very important caveat that gets left out of the manifestation conversation quite a bit or it's going to lead me to what I need to learn and discover about myself to put me on the track that my heart is truly desiring that I think is this particular route. So when yep. you go through those actions, I know it feels differently for myself, just the overall experience. I can feel very accomplished just by taking the starting actions without even having to see something all the way through whenever I'm being very intentional and showing up in my fullness as I take those actions. Because I'm a big believer. We think we know what we want, but really that's just our internal self projecting images to try to lead us in a direction to go towards what it is that we're ultimately destined towards. Um, so it's, uh, I have found great benefit in bringing that outside consideration into my, uh, even the most simple everyday actions. Doesn't matter if I'm washing dishes or making dinner or cleaning up around the house or, you know, doing paperwork for my business. Where is my mind? What words am I using whenever I discuss this? And how is it that I'm showing up to take this action? And it is yep, and very, very much body, mind, spirit. Exactly. The and same yeah, thing. exactly. And the energy you're outputting like you're outputting that energy. Is it in alignment with what you're asking for and what you want drawn to you? Because I think, like you said, the leveling the playing field, part of that is magnetizing your energy and anybody can do that. It's not, it's, there's free space for that. There's no competition. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Now I know you have got amazing ways that you support individuals and some really awesome products that you create for yourself and uh, for customers and you sell them online. I'd love to hear a little about, about if people were interested, if they're like, I want to know what all Jackie has going on. Tell me a little bit about some of your offerings. I know you do some amazing, beautiful channel meditations. Um, I would love to know how people can plug in and find out a little bit more about you and tell us some about the products that you make. Cause I just think that they're super, super awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Going back to connecting with plants. Cause that's mm -hmm. all that for sure. Um, okay. So my, you know, my main thing, my services and, um, my purpose, I feel like is the hub of who I am. Um, I feel like I connect very strongly with energy healing, um, and being able to transform that energy for others where they're feeling very stagnant in their body. Um, I, I'm kind of like that catalyst or medium to help that move for them and shift. Um, so I do that through Reiki healing, um, and so those would be my one-on-one -on -one sessions and I speak to, you know, spiritual counseling. So a, a tool for me that I do is I actually channel messages through writing. So if someone comes to me for a session, I'm doing the energy healing, but as I'm doing it, I'm actually doing a lot of writing. So they'll receive a lot of messages um, for them and guidance to take home with them. So they're able to kind of look over it, reflect over it and see where they can, you know, better utilize the guidance and messages I'm giving them. Um, and it's just, you know, for them to be in more alignment with their own path, if they're feeling stuck. Um, and then with that, I speak to, you know, the intentional aspect and how to get on the natural cycles. I offer group meditations. So I do them virtually so they could be done everywhere. Um, and I have them every full moon and new moon because um, that's the best way to get yourself to be in alignment with the cycles. It's the easiest way. It helps with being consistent. Um, and then from there, it's easier to get into your own self-practice of meditation. I also offer them in person for anyone who's local. Um, and that's currently the services I'm offering right now. Some spiritual wellness sessions that I do as well, which basically I take your birth natal chart and I connect it to your physical body um, and show you basically why you're experiencing certain things in your body and why you're so connected with that and why that's off. Now, for example, um, like the Virgo energy is very connected to the digestive tract. So if you are in lower vibrations of Virgo and not listening to the, that energy and where you need to find your balance. Like if your body's sending you signals and messages, if your digestive tract is off, it's telling you that you need to connect more with your emotions that, um, you know, may not be, um, you know, stagnant in your body and you're may, you may not be releasing or paying attention to. Um, so I do a lot of that or like even where to focus your physical health and what herbs work well for you. So those are another that's another session I do with people. Um, and then I also offer intuitive card readings. So um, I like to work with different decks um, and that's also guidance and intuitive um, messages that someone may need to hear in that moment. Um, those are beautiful. Um, I love seeing how it hit, hit, hits home for people because it's like they needed that um, from spirit and they just haven't been like, I guess it's taught or they don't remember how to listen. So through me, I'm able to give that to them. Um, and then they, from there, it seems that most of the time they receive the messages on how to be more connected to spirit. And then they're able to shift their life in that way. Um, for my products, um, like I said, I love working with plants. So I started that journey first um, before actually teaching um, meditation. And I started with spirit animal candles um, and crystals. I would put crystals in there um, and just for use of med through meditation. And it's been evolving ever since. Um, and I moved into, cause I'm very, very, um, I think it's super important for what you put in your body. Like if you are putting toxins in, that's what you're going to, your experience is going to be. So I thought it was important to create a line of skincare products and makeup that is all plants and herbs, no preservatives. 
Um, there's a lot of flowers used in them um, and they're vi high vibrational too. So now you're using these products and it's helping you shift your vibration internally as well. Um, and your skin naturally likes it. Um, you just, you could feel that glow and see it showing up after using these natural plants and, you know, products that are actually around us and using the tools that have already been created for us around us. Um, so I make, so anybody that deals with scalp issues, um, which I have noticed is a huge in our society. Um, and I think it's because shampoo, commercial shampoo, strips our hair of our, and our scalp of our natural oils. So from there you get stuck on this commercial product because you don't know how to reverse it. So I actually created a powder blend um, that has different herbal powders. So we got Shikai Kai powder in there, which is an Indian powder. If you think of Indian women, they have beautiful, long, shiny hair, right? Um, I have peppermint oil in there. I have lavender powder, witch hazel powder, a whole bunch of different plants that serve a purpose to help get your pH back in balance, your scalp healthy, um, able to do what it's naturally meant to do. And then from there you receive hair growth, strengthening, and then you don't need to wash your hair as, it, as we've been taught through this society. You're able to just, when you're ready to cleanse it, you can cleanse it. Um, and then I also make a pH balancing spray for any like rashes or unbalanced, like under your arms, um, on your face. Um, that also has all plant um, ingredients. And then I make powder foundation. I make mascara, which is like one of my number one selling products because a lot of people have sensitive eyes to the ingredients that are in commercial mascara. So that's made with um, activated charcoal, lavender, aloe vera. It's a very like one of my number one selling products. And she um, also, for any gemstone and crystal lovers, yeah. uses a ground down, was it moonstone or something like that? Moonstone, <laughs> yep, in the mascara. And then I actually also use selenite in my powder foundation. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's in uh, my dry shampoo as well, which is also super soothing to the scalp. And so many and of us, we're used to this idea of like grabbing a crystal and putting it in our pocket or sticking it in our bra or carrying yeah. it in our purse so that we can have that extra, you know, feel good vibes around us and that extra energetic support. So imagine ladies that are watching this, uh, putting that onto your face every day and putting it onto your eyelashes. So you're actually just in it like, um, <laughs> enrobing yourself in this healing energy as you're doing your, your typical makeup routine or your day-to-day, -day, you know, rituals that you have. I, I love, love, love the thoughtfulness and the added intentions. I mean, imagine if all of our products that we are exposed to and that we utilize have yeah. this kind of thought behind it, it would be just absolutely just magical little world to live in even I mean, more so than it is. Yep. And that goes with the Reiki infused. Like I'm I believe that when we are creating, we're putting our energy into it. 100%. So i wanted to basically show that in the product. So I have citrine in my um, pH balancing spray too, because citrine is excellent for the skin. So I'm giving that energy into that. Um, that. And I also, so I also make flower essences, which I'm not sure, it seems to be like an underrated herbal medicine, but it's no doubt. so good for emotional healing and spiritual healing. Um, you're, I mean, I just have this special connection. Um, it is definitely a gift. I call it because I basically need to connect with the flowers to create them. Um, and each flower has their own property and essence that wants to give to you as like, here, I want to heal you with this. So there, I almost feel like flowers are here for us to use. I'm so thankful for the flowers. Um, so I make those and I make little bottles. You ingest them. It's like water with the plant's essence. Um, and if like you need support, you have racing mind, right? I'll give you a hydrangea flower essence and hydrangea works very well with the mind to help still it and bring calmness to the mind. Um, and kind of ease that anxiety that shows up. And I also, when I create those, I put crystals around them, like when they're stored, they're, you know, in crystal energy being more enhanced. So I'm super intentional about the products I make for sure. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I know you and I can chat for like 15 more hours on the same topic, but since we got a little bit of limited time, I'm going to open this up for a group discussion. See, we have Linda here live on the line. See if there's anything that you want to, um, 
ask Jackie or add to the conversation, would love to just kind of expand this out a little bit. So first of all, I love the conversation. I'm just going to start there. Um, I also want to say, very funny, Jackie, I'm from New York City. I went to the High School of Art and Design. I struggled with anxiety. I moved to North Carolina. Wow. <laughs> We should have a, we should get connected outside of this call because I, yeah. I, I heard like 20 things I had in common with you. Those are the oh, main yeah. ones, but there's a million little ones. Um, what I also think is very powerful is, and I, for people who are hearing this conversation and replay, while it's super cool that Jackie's making those things, you know, you can make anything and, and sew your intentions into it. So for example, I make these beautiful handmade cards um, and as I'm making them, I'm sowing love and kindness and peace, uh, prosperity into uh, those are the things I'm focusing on while I'm making these cards so that when I write this card and send it to somebody, it's not just a pretty card. I'm sending all those intentions to that person. And, you know, you've mailed cards across your life. People don't call you about them. People always call me. <laughs> oh, I love your card. And they're like gushing. And while, yes, the card is pretty, I mean, I'm not saying that that's not the case. There's, you can tell from their response to my card that they received those intentions. They felt, even if they're not in the same way laid as us, because, you know, this is an evolutionary process to get to where we are, you know, in our, in our collective thinking here, even when you're outside of this thinking or brand new to this thinking, you can, in your, in your heart and in your soul sense the intentions and the reverse is true. If you get around somebody and you have a bad feeling, you're a dis, dis at ease or you feel warned, you know, you should listen and honor to that too, because that inner wisdom is in all of us. So I think Chrissy's comment about making the playing field level is beautiful. We're all like priestesses. We're all, we all have this ancient wisdom, you know, we're, you know, a drop of it's placed into us when we're two cells in our mother's womb, right? So we've had this, but I think society teaches us not to listen to it or discount it, or it's women silliness or, you know, whatever, we're hysterical females. I mean, we've all heard these stupid branding concepts attached to our knowing, right? And so I, I just challenge anybody within hearing range of this conversation to question those labels and rethink the value of that inner wisdom for themselves, you know, we should all honor and listen to it. But I, I really think it's great, um, the stories that are going on here in these conversations, Chrissy, and that, that you're highlighting people and giving them, you know, uh, a moment of your platform to, to extend their brand and, and, and to increase understanding of the collective by sharing the wisdom. I think that's a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm honored and privileged to sit in the company of the two of you ladies, uh, beautiful, beautiful souls. It's, it's a pleasure just to sit and listen. Loved every minute of it. Awesomeness. Love that. Love that. I feel like one of the luckiest girls ever because I work with some of the most amazing clients, like brilliant clients. And I get to know this because, <laughs> you know, we work one-on-one -on -one and they share all their intimate inside stuff that they are feeling called to bring out into the world. So I get to see like the real depths that they have inside of them. And my thought of having these conversations, it just really, the experience has been over the top. So I hope everybody's enjoying them as well, because I get to experience your brilliance in a totally different way when we open up and share in these conversations and just hearing your, your knowingness and your certainty and your conviction and commitment that you have not only to yourself, not only to your families, but to society at large, to every individual. I'm, I'm getting the chills again, just saying that it really is so beautiful and such an honor to witness and to support. And I love that um, committed individuals like Linda are tuning in and showing up again for yourselves, for your family and for the society at large, uh, because this it's up to us. We decide what this world is. And the more that we have these conversations out loud, the more that we make it the norm, even within our own circles, within our own life, the more that we have that opportunity to just keep expanding it and expanding it and expanding it outwardly. So I thank you so much for your time, Jackie, today for this conversation, Linda, for tuning in and everybody who's watching the replay. Before we sign off, I'd love to, to know any final words, Jackie, or anything that you want to share or any, anything you have coming up, you'd love to invite people to just whatever's on your heart. 
So, I mean, first of all, I also want to say thank you because you've been a big impact for me to get to where I am and to help me, me <laughs> totally grow into my business. So like, absolutely. I agree with what you're saying. Like, I feel like it's very nice to be connected with powerful women that um, are on the same journey and seeking this similar thing. So that's amazing. And, you. you know, I think this is so important too, because I have children because like you said, with the society conditioning, I want my daughter to continue to down the path and not have to work through so much that I had to work through from being conditioned when I was younger. So I'm hoping to keep that. Like my daughter right now, she is working. She told me she wants to create her own meditation circle. So any little girls that want to join, they're welcome. Um, she does posted. Reiki with me. <laughs> she just posted. I'm sure Keely would love to join in. Oh, that's yeah, amazing. I mean, Absolutely. Yes, yeah, she is. She's My little already girl's 30 it. years old, so I don't think she'll be coming. <laughs> <laughs> she could come to mine if she wants. That's my mm -hmm. age group. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the next thing I do plan on creating a crystal class that's local, um, just one-on-one -on -one basics. Um, I want to do a Feng Shui crystal class, which is how you balance the energies of crystals throughout your house. Um, chakra balancing. And then my most recent upcoming is going to be for the new moon and cancer, which is on the ninth. So that'll be virtual. So yep. Love that's it. basically what Wonderful. I have going on. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. We'll keep doing your thing. I don't think that, I don't think we go two weeks without me like taking a picture of a plant that I find in my yard. And I'm asking Jackie, some people are into <laughs> apps. I go straight to the source. I'm like, Jackie, what is this plant? Can I do anything with it? And, um, yeah. I just really delight in our connection. And again, it's such an honor to support you and the work that you're doing in the world. I saw it like the first moment that we met, I was like, this girl's got Got it. Thank and since <laughs> we're here to pioneer a new way, I really feel like that's what I'm here to do is to pioneer a new way of doing business and connecting to yourself and bringing, bridging that gap between the spiritual world and this more conventional world that we're a part of. And how do we do it uh, in a way that's really aligned and true to us? And uh, I, I find it very challenging to pioneer this, but I love guiding other people through the process uh, because I really fully believe that, the, that we are the future we are the future. And this is the way that entrepreneurship is going to be done. This is the way that people are going to show up in their lives. So somewhere it has to get started. And of course I didn't start it. And the people who introduced me to it, didn't start it. It was started a long time ago, all leading up to now, to right now, there's such a powerful shift that's happening in the world. So if you're drawn to this conversation, stay plugged into me, get plugged into Jackie, reach out to Linda, everybody within this holistic healing circle. I mean, y'all are true powerhouses and we are the ones that are going to change this world. And we do it by changing our world. It's an inside out job. And there's plenty of guides out there. Um, if we're not the right ones, we can surely introduce you to other people um, to help you find your niche, your tribe, and help you to bring your purpose into full view in, for your own life and how you can live that out uh, more authentically in your day to day. So I appreciate your time, ladies. Thank you so much. I'm so excited that I set up these conversations and I'm looking forward to the next one. So check the calendar. I think it's August is the next time that we have a fifth Tuesday. It's either August or September. So just a couple months away, we'll be diving into another great conversation like this. And if you have comments, thoughts, questions, drop them in the comments below. I know that we would love to hear your thoughts and takeaways. We would love to hear your shares. If you do something similar or a little bit different than what we talked about, tell us about it in the comments below, reach out to us and we look forward to connecting and have a wonderful, amazing day, ladies. Thank you so much for your time. Yes. Nice meeting you, Linda. I would love to talk to you more for sure. Yeah. I'm copying down your email address, divine healing oasis at gmail.com. Yeah. Expect an email. Yeah. And yeah. say your, um, your website. I mean, I'll, I'll try to post links and all that you email me okay. links that you want people to have, and I'll make sure that I'll post it in the description. So if you're watching this in replay, check the description. I'll have all of Jackie's contact information, Perfect. but if you want to say it, what's the best way for them to reach you? So my website is divinehealingoasis.com, um, which you can easily go to the contact form and send me an email. So perfect. And you have an Etsy shop as well, Divine Healing Oasis, if people want to check yes. out your products. And I think you, your products are in a store local to you as well. Yes. So Simply Urban, which is a loose herb shop, which is super cool. Um, there's not many like it. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a cool store to check out because it's all the natural things. And where's that located? That's located in Youngsville, Youngsville. on Main Street. Oh, okay. near me. Yes. Here it's a North super Carolina. cool store.
Yeah. Awesome. All right, ladies, have an amazing day and everybody watching. Thank you so much for being here and we will see you again next time. All right. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.